returned to New England to find Bonnie still apparently suffering from disturbing poltergeist activity, yet more determined than ever to understand its cause and rid her house of the problem permanently. A week after Lorraine's assessment visit to Bonnie's house, her research team moved in. The entire house was laced with infrared cameras, audio recorders and other sensing equipment by Techie John, researcher Barbie and team leader Dave. I was, I was jumping around between 1.8 and 2 millibars, so that indicates that there is there's something there. Like I said, I have, I have a feeling we're going to see activity tonight. Dave was particularly interested in reports of an apparition that had been spotted on more than one occasion. There is a small girl that has been seen from time to time, so we don't know if she's associated with this house. So they, she may be associated with this house. She has been known to say why. So we don't know exactly why, I mean, why is she saying that. She may be associated with the house. She seems to be coming towards this house. Now you were saying that, that you weren't sure that she was a human girl. Well, we don't know. That's why we're here. We need to find out. The team didn't have long to wait before things started happening. Moments after Barbie had plugged in the camera, the team spotted their first anomalies on the monitor. Light orbs, referred to in America as globules. You got globules coming at you. I'm going to start recording. Start recording. They were coming right at the camera. It smells like ozone. Hmm? It smells like after lightning okay, in the uh, room Barbie's in now. Ozone. Dave. Barbie says she just felt felt like somebody was standing behind her. Oh, oh it's what you. It's what, she, it's what she's seeing. She, she, she's she's seeing shadows. Barb's uh, mom's coming up to coming up to visit with you. Whereabouts were you seeing it, Bob? It was right there on the wall in the area of where the curtain is and stretching over to where the picture frame was. Right. It was really distinctive, as if somebody was standing in the doorway and casting a shadow. And that's why I asked if anybody was up here with me. Right. It, it really looked like someone was there. Okay, I'm going to switch over to quad. Oh, oh a globule, a Barbie. A nice bright globule just came up from the uh, couch, came right at you. And there's a good solid white. Oh, okay, another one. Okay, another one just went, went. Oh, holy smokes. You okay, Jane? Yeah. Which direction are they coming from? Uh, looks like they're coming from by where the lamp is. What they're seeing downstairs are globules, and they seem to be coming from the area of the lamp. Huh? Most are actually going towards you. That's interesting. While Barbie and I had been upstairs, Dave was monitoring the sound equipment and he was keen for us to hear the unexplained noises that had been picked up in the empty stairwell next to the kitchen. What was that? I don't know. It was just before that dog barked. Yeah, yeah. Did somebody touch that microphone at all? Before that dog barked? Did you hear that? Nope, John's in the back. Something just came to this mic. That was oh, when the dog barked. The yep. Although the upstairs drawing room, known as the Red Room, had been the site of the most activity in the past, nothing had happened there yet tonight, and Dave felt it might be a good idea to have Bonnie sit in the room alone for a while. She's experienced so much, so many things in this house that she should be the one, if anything's going to happen in that room, right. she will draw it. Right. Watching the room on the monitor downstairs, we could see everything in the darkness thanks to the infrared camera. Bonnie and the furniture in the room, like the picture frame on the opposite wall, were clearly visible. But almost as soon as she sat down, we spotted a strange shape moving. What's that up there? Since Bonnie was alone in the room, and there were no light sources, there was no obvious explanation for what we were seeing. When Dave suggested I join Bonnie in the Red Room, it was an offer I couldn't refuse. It seemed like something was happening, and this could be my chance to find out what. It was too dark to see anything, but the atmosphere was oppressive. 
And although only Bonnie and I were in the room, it didn't feel like we were alone. I suddenly got this really bad, like, pressure pain by my eye. Oh, my God. It seriously feels like when you're on an aeroplane and the pressure drops. That's really weird. After 15 minutes, I was glad to get out. That was really quite creepy sitting in there. I mean, I suppose, you know, playing devil's advocate, you could say the old houses make creaky noises and it's late and I'm tired, but it was, I did feel really creeped out in there. It just felt like the skin on the back of my neck and all down my spine was crawling. I was kept literally shuddering. You know, I suppose it's possible to freak yourself out. But the, the noises really did sound like they were coming from the door. It really sounded like someone was right on the other side of the door, which was quite disturbing. And it was very cold, and it did genuinely feel at one point like there was a pressure drop in the room, literally, and a huge pain behind my eyes. And it did just feel like suddenly the air became really thick. No, it was really, really strange. Whether or not you believe in poltergeists, the suffering of the victims in these cases is undeniably real. From the unease of the people on the Edinburgh Ghost Tour to the trauma suffered by Janet at Enfield. And what of the Beckwith family in New England? During my investigation, I met Bonnie's mother who shared the family home. But just days after I returned to England, I received the tragic news that she'd died. She'd seemed in good health, and the family still don't know the cause of her death. But chillingly, Bonnie won't rule out the possibility that it was somehow connected with the dark presence in her house, that somehow it was the work of a poltergeist. Well, I guess we'll never know. And the most haunted team are on a quest to uncover the ghostly mysteries of Smith Hills Hall next on Living 2.